Would you like to tell me how it got started? It started having a go on the wheel at school when I was about 13 and I didn't make a very good job of it at all and then in the 70s they were doing night classes um, and so I went along to that and got really interested in it. Ended up going two or three nights a week and then fortunately I was made redundant from my job in the wood trade and that was an opportunity to have a go at doing it full time. So I got a job in York in a pottery there, doing various jobs and eventually going on the wheel. So we made all sorts of shapes and things, uh, but I really enjoyed working on the wheel the most. So I was there 14 years and then, and then I've been in the park since then, making pots full time for myself, you know, self-employed. And how long have you been here in the park? I've uh, been here 23 years now uh, in the park. Yeah. And you're telling me how much you enjoy doing this. It's the, um, the creating something from a lump of clay and seeing it grow in front of your eyes is a thrill that never disappears really. To make mugs we need 12 ounces for a mug and I can get all the pots the same size if I know the weight. So we spent quite a bit of effort getting the clay prepared. Up to keep them damp. I'm making some small pots and usually I make them from one lump of clay to save me centering the ball of clay each time. Got to get the clay right in the middle of the wheel. I spend about two minutes on each pot and I would spend a day just making pots on the wheel. Probably make a hundred pots in the day and then decorate them and finish them over the next two days. I need to dry out from this stage before I can do any more work on them. pot's going to have a lid on so I'm just making a seating for the lid. Uh, 
so it's upside down throwing part of the making the pots it's a thrill that never goes really uh, making something from a lump of clay the pots you're making. yeah just a bar it's incredibly it's creative isn't it yeah it's uh, it's a bit of an addiction really <laughs> but you've got to stop just in the middle of just carry making on. one just carry on What's that? This man's uh, doing a good job. Into the watch that. So it's brilliant. Ah, isn't that good? That's another wow, lump of clay. Is that? There we go. It's amazing. Oh, look at that. sides smooth because I'm going to press leaves into the clay later on I'm not putting pots where I normally would so I'm not quite getting into my groove as it were I'll just uh, have to measure well, the three and seven eighths an inch working in old-fashioned measurements and um, and it's going to shrink about 12 percent just dry my hands to do this bit so we've got we did a bowl didn't we so uh, just get some leaves uh, some are from home and some are from the park. So I'm looking for ones with deep veins in the back so that I can get a decent pattern into the clay. Uh, well, sycamore quite good, th this one, and oak leaf are quite a nice shape, but they're a bit crinkly, they don't always sit down flat. So I need to wet the surface of the pots was done a couple of days ago uh, so it's been drying out overnight and it's more or less like a piece of cheese so that's a good stage to work on it so I just press the leaves in get them really flat to form a barrier between the clay just get all the edges down otherwise the colour I put over the top is going to run underneath the leaf And some different ones. Well, I've got all the leaves in now, so we need a colour to go over the top. And this is called slip. It's just a mixture of water and clay, and, and it's got some metal oxides in it as well, which will give it a dark colour once it's been fired. 
So I'm going to put a thick layer on the top of the clay. When the leaves are peeled out later on, it will reveal the natural colour of the clay underneath. This one's got to dry off now for about half an hour and then I'll be able to peel the leaves out again. So I've got one that's drying a bit. I can peel some of the leaves out on this one. I'll start with that one.